What is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and today's show is going to be packed. Everything that has just transpired over the last 48 hours, we're going to talk about it. There are uh, now information and documents that reveal that there may be cyber events on multiple levels, not only in Europe, uh, but in, uh, of course, China uh, if with the Olympics. So we'll talk about all of that and the possibility of it happening right here in the U.S. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. No, I'm not going out there where apocalypse runs. outside of my window, seeing a crescendo. I'm not going out there where apocalypse runs. All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marf Fugle News. Today, we have a lot to go over, so remember, uh, today is a live call-in show. It is uh, 224400-MARF to get a hold of DEX. I'm going to turn that number on right now. If it is your first time, uh, remember, you can call in. You're encouraged to. We want new callers every single show. So uh, first-time callers are encouraged to call 224400-MARF. That number will be scrolling down on that black bar. Now, again, uh, if you are new, uh, make sure to follow us over on marfuglenews.com. You can grab a second device while you're watching today's show and follow along on all of the articles. If we show you a video, a tweet, a document, an article, or uh, anything that's archived, it will be a uh, over on our website with a full bibliography. That way you know exactly where your stories are coming from. That way you can also check our work as far as if we show you uh, something as far as a document, you know where to get access to it. Now, it is very easy to navigate. It is done by thumbnail. They warned us slash US, uh, but will anyone listen? Uh, that is right on the front of our page. And once you click on that, you will see that you will get uh, official release reveals. Once you click on that, you'll have all of the links. Every single article, tweet, video is all right there at your fingertips. It takes a lot of time before every show. So remember, use this. It is a very powerful tool. There's also a search bar up in the upper right hand corner. So if you find that something from today is possibly related to a coincidental article four months ago, you can go search that. Again, remember, you have this tool. Now, uh, I, I think that a lot of previous stories end up coming and being a part of the next, uh, you, you know, the next year, uh, of course. We'll have a lot of things that we said, well, wait a second. We saw this coming a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, and it's all going to be archived. Now, uh, remember down when you go a little bit further, you will see that there is actually a yellow bar. That is web-only content. That is essentially uh, stuff for, that's too hot for TV, uh, that it, it's stuff that we can't cover if it's too far to one direction uh, or we'll get knocked off. Uh, that is an entire other show down there. Remember to check that out. Now, on the right side, if you do want to support us, we are independent. Uh, it is Dex and I and a team of volunteer mods that do this. So if you uh, definitely make sure to go over there and if you do want to support or uh, do something like Amazon.com, something you might already be using, if you use that box, you'll end up using our affiliate link. You won't be paying a dime more and you'll be helping the channel out at the same time. On top of that, you have PayPal over there and of course, uh, different affiliates, PayPal and things like that and all of the affiliates that helps pay for Dex's part of this show. So thank you guys for supporting us. All right. And then uh, 
Dex, let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother slash will be on the phones at two two four four zero zero Marf tonight. What is happening and how are you doing tonight? Well, hello Adam and hello Fugle fam. I am doing just fine. So, uh, just can you remind people what button to push when they get through to our phone tree? Yeah, just press four. Uh, excuse me, press four, and uh, yeah, the, the phones are lit up. So, just keep trying. All right, thank you so much. Uh, so, Dex is going to go over to the phones. We'll get uh, covered in in our first three stories here. East Tennessee preparedness is hi, Adam Dex Mo- mods and Fugle fam. Thanks for helping me get to one thousand subs. That is awesome. I believe you were you were uh, just short. Uh, last show so simply pony thank you so much uh cal j went thank you for subscribing and cameroon uh and cameron thank you so much stan lee i wish that was the real stan lee uh but again thank you for uh subscribing kds 1069 time thank you for uh subscribing just now stepping in in it thank you as well and then spartan o negative before the show even started uh did a two dollar and 22 cent uh super chat so thank you that is really appreciated and then uh let's get right into it of course this we found that there are actual threats uh to the olympics and what they're saying i just want you to remember when they talk about cyber uh events i i guess you're gonna have to watch a good chunk of the show, or at least until the middle part where we talk about the other stuff, because there are multiple announcements just in the last two or three days that are talking about possible cyber events. Not only that, they are basically telling us that there are going to be cyber events. So pay attention to this one. Now, this is taking place, they say, is going to take place over in the Olympics. Uh, It says, on January 31st, 2022, the FBI issued a private industry notification entitled, quote, Potential for Malicious Cyber Activities to Disrupt the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics and Paralympics, warning those associated with the Olympics, Paralympics, uh, and uh, being held in Beijing that cyber actors could use a broad range of cyber activities to disrupt these events. The activities that could be used include distributed denial of uh, service or DDoS attacks, uh, ransomware, malware, social engineering, data theft, or leaks, phishing campaigns, disinformation campaigns, or inside uh, insider threats. And when successful, can block or disrupt the live broadcast of an event. So just, just kind of throwing this out there. This did not get uh, main coverage. In fact, Uh, This was buried. I don't believe a lot of people are talking about this at all. You you type in almost you you would have to type in almost this exact thing to find it. Uh, Dex did not find it. I I found it while looking at DOD and DHS stuff, and it was buried. Now it notice how they say and can block or disrupt the live broadcast of an event. Now, this is from National Law Review. The reason it uh, actually it was published on the National Law Review. Uh, Again, this is also on the FBI websites. Uh, The reason it looks a little bit different from our normal articles is because it would not go into our our system here and and do black and white. Uh, So, again, this is this is kind of a strange thing here. Now, what what is the first thing you think of when you see this kind of warning and then saying that it could interrupt our broadcast? Let me know in the comments below. I know that our audience is one of the smartest and one of the, uh, incredible, the incredible investigators in our audience. So what do you guys think is going on with that? And then we're going to touch back on the FBI warning uh, when it comes to the next story, or uh, I'm sorry, when the, the next uh cyber story comes up it says oil tanker capable of carrying two million barrels explodes off the coast of nigeria it says an oil tanker capable of carrying up to two million barrels of oil a day has exploded off the coast of nigeria dramatic video shows the immense ship ablaze with thick black smoke pouring into the sky as it appears to be sinking into the sea none of the ship's 10 crew members on board at the time of the explosion uh, have been accounted for So essentially everybody on the ship is missing. 
Uh, reports claim that the Trinity Spirit exploded on Thursday morning at the Ukpukatiki uh, oil field close to the river Niger Delta near the Escrivos Terminal in uh, Nigeria. The cause of the explosion is still being investigated. According to the Ekamafuna Ukafor, chief executive of Shiba Exploration and Production Company. <coughs> It says that there's no, at this time, there's no fatalities, but of course the 10 people are unaccounted for, so we'll see on that. Uh, is this related to anything strange? Let me know if you find anything. Uh, email me at adam at marfuglenews.com or uh, go over to my Twitter, at marfugal, and DM me. I'd love to hear about it. And then, of course, Ottawa Police Chief may call in the military to handle the protests. If you haven't heard about the truckers uh, traveling, uh, to Ottawa to, uh, of course, protest this this big thing that's been happening in the world for the last two years. Uh, they now say that they may involve the military. It says that Canadians protesting the mandates say that the protests in Ottawa have been peaceful and filled with, quote, joy and love. And I believe that. Ottawa's chief of police suggested Wednesday that the Canadian Armed Forces might have to be called in to handle the lingering po protesters in the Canadian capital. Apparently, uh, they, uh, they were trying to go from eh to z. This is a national issue, not an Ottawa issue. Ottawa Police Chief Peter Slowly said in a briefing to the city councillors, it says, I am increasingly concerned there is no policing, uh, uh, no policing solution to this. Slally said that the clearing protesters out of the city also comes with risks, that police aren't capable of blocking access to the capital, and he would need a, to force uh, of 50,000 officers to do so. He said that the military aid remains a possibility. There is no lawful authority to seal a city. Uh, there is no practical capability to seal a city of this size. So pretty odd they're even talking about uh, the wording they use is sealing uh, to seal a city. But it says, can you be clear about what you mean? Asked the reporter. It says that is alarming to people. I'd like to hear what we are talking about when we say that. It says slowly responded that the authorities it says are looking at every potential option available to us within the legal bounds from negotiation through the court injunction uh, through an enforced removal. So they're talking about possibly sealing it and manually forcing everybody out. Now, I don't know how Canada, as far as their laws work, but here in the U.S., uh, I believe it would probably be a lot harder than it, it would be here than it, uh, it would be a lot harder here than it would be there. I don't know how their constitution or, or what they have that, that works as that uh, is with free speech and with going there and protesting. But I would guess that it's a little bit, uh, you know, not as free as ours. I don't know. But I don't want to speak because I, I don't want to be ignorant on the subject. It says, increasingly, as we see demonstrations, not just here, but elsewhere in the country, there are all, all efforts by strictly policing action. We are not as confident as we may have been uh, that police alone would resolve this situation substantially. Now, let me point out one thing. So there were 50,000 people at least protesting and I have not heard of anything like seriously, you know, just mass chaos or anything. It was not 50,000 even, not nowhere close to 50,000 in some of the worst events that happened over the last two years. And that was, of course, protest for a different reason. Now, all I'm saying is uh, it's pretty, it's been pretty chill from what I've seen. Uh, again, if you have other you know, documentation showing that it is just getting out of hand and uncontrollable every day, then let me know. Uh, Meet Public 007, GoFundMe cut the tr funding that was raised. Uh, Meet Public, we actually covered that twice. They cut it once, and then they got it back, and then they cut it a second time. I don't know how they can do that. How can they cut GoFundMes to certain people and not others? It seems to me like our system is very blatantly uh, supporting one side of the aisle, but not the other. It's very strange. Uh, it says, Open House Texas, hello, Adam and Dex. Can we get a confirmation if anyone has heard about the P prime minister implementing dates next week to take away all freedoms from Canadians, throwing out the Constitution? Open House Texas, I don't think you need confirmation from that. 
Um, that sounds like somebody who just kind of made up some stuff and threw it on the internet and people are spreading it around. Now, I'm not going to speak on that because I don't know if there's other channels, uh, possibly channels that, you know, we're friendly with talking about it. I don't know. What I do know is that I heavily uh, research things like that, especially when things are being said like that, uh, because they're so people will try to call this fear mongering when we back up our stuff. But there are fear mongers that literally try to scare you and then say, you know, hey, get my uh, Jesus T-shirt. You know, that that kind of thing is is that's disgusting. OK, so I wouldn't be scared that all of Canada is going to remove all of their laws or uh, just throw the Constitution out. Um, I would highly recommend do some really, really deep research. And I mean, outside of Google and and go in and actually look at documentation and see if you can find anything on that. Uh, Errol the Wrestling Mermaid says, Hey, Marf, Mike has unfortunately broke up with me. He's unsure about the distance. I'm heartbroken and appreciate you a lot. Errol the Wrestling Mermaid, of course, always said uh, hello to her long distance hobby on the show. Well, Mike, I hope things work out with you guys, and uh, I know that Errol loves you a whole lot. Um, and then Susan Bailey uh, Coopty, thank you for your super chat. Joseph Newhouse. Is the boycott thing just for official appearances? Hmm. Uh, good question. Al Krantz, hello from Canada. Appreciate everything you do. Bones, thank you as well. Uh, thank you guys. If you haven't checked out our mods channel, he does a great job. Okay, and then uh, this is very strange. So a lot of people are saying that this is some sort of stand-in. Uh, the first thing I actually thought is that does look like Kim. So this is 2019, Kim, and this is 2021, Kim. If you see the difference, it's set, it, it, the difference is obviously the weight. Now, something is definitely off. His teeth are the same. His nose is the same. Everything is the same. I, I don't know. So <clears throat> just to run through so, sort of the history, uh, about a year and a half ago, there was an incident. I was actually out with family. I, I remember... It like I was there and they actually first reported that Kim Jong-un might have been taken out or he might have died on a surgery table. That was what I first got. And I said, holy moly, uh, I, I rushed home. I, I said, you know, kids, we're, we're leaving the park. We're going home because I thought stuff might go down like I didn't know what was going on. Uh, a lot of people didn't for the first like 20 minutes. And then it ended up that he was getting a surgery on a table. They said that he was getting some sort of brain surgery or some sort of heart surgery. Something went wrong. And then there, the word, then it changed and it said that uh, he was a vegetable, that he wasn't all there. And then it changed again and said that uh, he's recovering and he's fine. Then it changed to he was dead, uh, but they're trying to cover it up. And then, of course... Before that, Dennis Rodman ended up doing an interview. Now, Dennis Rodman, the basketball player, played for the Bulls. Uh, the only reason why he pops into this is because he's personal friends with Kim Jong-un. Uh, Kim Jong-un has flown Dennis Rodman out to party with him. And basically, they are like best friends and he's close with the family. Which sounds weird, but whatever. Dennis Rodman says, if you see his sister talking more publicly, then something is probably up. And sure enough, it was about two or three weeks later, his sister pops up into the picture and is doing all of these public appearances and speaking for him. Now, they say that there have been timed interviews and that they're seeing him. I just want you to look closely at this picture. He's being held on both arms, almost like he's being guided. And then look at his blank stare like he's staring off to the ceiling. That, it just doesn't, and he's smiling like, what the heck? This is his normal smile. This is his uh, Tweety Bird smile, I guess. And then look at the concern on these people. It's almost a, like they're like, oh, there's a camera. They didn't want this camera to take a picture. It look, That's what it looks like, at, at least. What is going on with Kim? What do you think? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Do you think he just lost weight? Do you think he's now a health guru instead of uh, Dennis Rodman? Is he going to call Richard Simmons to party with? I don't know. Is and that a wax figure? Yeah. Is it? Is it even a human, right? Is it little 
little kids taking pictures with the wax doll. I don't know. It's it's really weird. His eyes are a little bit off, and they're just kind of dazed off into the into the ceiling. They did address it in the news today over there. They said that he has been working so hard that he's worked his health, you know, because he worked so hard, his health is so bad, and that's why he's lost all the weight. Which doesn't know. make any sense. I don't know. That, that It's pretty weird. Um, I want to thank Tower Bear. Thank you for being the last one out on DLive with Lisa K23. Thank you for uh, Ninja Gini last time, and then Kishara. In Canada, they won't have rights. Uh, cats meow. Well, I you know I wouldn't be surprised by anything, but I would highly recommend doing research on Dex. Do you know of anything about them losing their constitution or them flipping stuff and and just completely losing all losing it? Not yet. Okay. And then uh, again, while we're on it, I would highly recommend going over and checking this out. The reason why we recommend going and looking at solar generators, one, they are silent. Nobody will know that you have one. Two, Energy is one of the most sought after generator companies out there. Uh, there was a waiting list for a very long time. Uh, again, there is still a small waiting list, but again, this is something that uh, people have wanted for now two years straight. Uh, people have been uh, clamoring over these. The reason why is they are so well put together. Uh, they are modular. They are portable. You can actually stack one battery underneath, or if you want to add another, you can add another and another and another. Uh, again, you can make a whole battery wall out of these. Uh, the energy is now pa uh, actually powering this entire show. Uh, both of my power bars and all of my lights are being powered by the energy right now. The reason why is if we lose power, uh, my show will still going. Uh, our router, everything is being powered by this device. So again, make sure to go check it out. Uh, you can hear there is no sound, but it is now running uh, and powering everything. So that is the good part about solar generators. Uh, they are silent. Your neighbors won't know you have one when everything hits the fan. Uh, but on top of that, they're portable. You can take them camping, you can power your campsite, or you can power your uh, different devices that you need in an emergency. So again, it, it's a very amazing modular system. They even uh, have different things you can buy as far as accessories, uh, low voltage cookers, uh, you know, all sorts of really cool stuff. They even have plug-in lights that chain and you can light your uh, entire house or your entire campsite uh, all with a very low voltage thing that can run for you know dozens and dozens if not hundreds of hours again go to marfuglenews.com energy any purchase of one of these uh, will end up helping the show so again if you want to support us and you've been looking for a solar generator i would highly recommend you go and check these out it's marfuglenews.com energy with an i I-N-E-R-G-Y. Make sure to use the code MARFUGEL. Uh, again, thank you guys in advance. And then uh, let's let's go over. We're going to go over to the phones here in just a sec. Uh, I do want to remind you the number is 2244 marf uh, And uh, Stoplight is on the, f the phone. First time caller from Australia and wants to give uh, their thoughts on Ukraine. Let's get a stoplight on, and then we'll talk about uh, DHS high-ranking Homeland Security official ended up getting raided. And Adam, stoplight is live. Stoplight, you're live on Marfugal News. What's going on? Hi, Adam. How is everybody? How is everybody going over there in the U.S.? We are doing good. So, so uh, what's happening, and, and what are your thoughts on Ukraine? Mm, um, I'm really hoping, but, you know, hoping against hope that nothing will go down as all the big, what you would probably call a uh, a nothing burger is my is my hope. But who knows? Now, so, of course, what from Australia, how are you guys doing in Australia? Are you there now or are you just from Australia? No, no, I'm sitting there right now in my my home here in South Australia. Um, and depends on which state you're in as to what sort of stupidity you are getting. Let me say it that way. <laughs> now, uh, do you think do you, now do you think that what's going on over there is worse than than it is here in the US? 
Um, I probably would say that in Victoria, especially in Melbourne and probably Sydney, the two main the two main areas, um, that would be the place where the stupidity would be at its greatest, along with currently Perth in Western Australia, because he's the, the guy that looks after them has them pretty much shut off from the worst, rest of Australia and probably the world as far as I know. Now, do you know anybody that has personally uh, dealt with this this system as far as going and staying in the hotels, the quote hotels? Uh, I do know one gentleman that works with us. He was in Brisbane and his wife tested positive and he had to go and stay in one of the hotels. So that is at his cost. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's sort of what happens, unfortunately. You, you, uh, you can't avoid it. But I will say it's starting in my state. It's starting to relax a bit more. Um, the, the, uh, the major concern isn't there. Uh, we, 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 we were QRing to get into, you know, lots of say we've been here so they could track and trace, but that's all just about gone now. Um, and there's not much else going on, really. Now, can I ask you a question about Australia? Have you noticed any military activity? I don't know what your area is, but have you noticed anything from where you're at as far as, and, and does any no, of the local news no. talk about it? No, absolutely, no absolutely, absolutely nothing here. My state would have has a lot of defence-related stuff, um, you know, building of and that sort of thing, but um, most of our major system would be up in Northern Territory and up the north of Australia, top into Queensland, uh, New South Wales and across that way. But no would be a simple answer. Um, it's pretty much normal, but... Who knows? I mean, that could all change like we all see in a minute. Now, do, now let me ask you. You're in Australia. You found my show somehow. Uh, but also, do, the media that's in yep. Australia, how are they talking right now? Do they Are they saying that it's looking... You know, what do they say about China? And then what do they say about Russia? Uh, coming from somebody who's in Australia, what is what is the view of your country? Uh I, I hate to say it, but unfortunately, like a lot of people, I don't take a lot of, um, you know, looking at the MSN at all. I don't really watch MSN because you just get the same thing all the time. We'll have an hour news and 95% of the time they're talking about the same stuff. It sort of, it weaves its way in that we've been talking about the last two years. It's not just straight up, but every, you know, every fourth or fifth, item we'll be talking about it somehow it'll just get related but they you know occasionally we get the china the uh, you know the, the the asian area talked about um but they're all also keeping an eye on on the european area as well so we pick that up along the way and and, and a bit in our newspapers but yeah they're not they're not jumping all over it as much at the moment but i would give it time well, we will see. Now, there was something else that you wanted to, to say uh, that is your first time call. You had a, an opinion about it or something, or you wanted to talk about the fam or what? Oh, uh, no. Yeah, no, I just it's, it's just great. I mean, I've done my opinion stuff with the, the European bit. No, I'm just ringing out to say thanks to all you guys, and thanks to you and Adam. Uh, you and Adam. Adam and Dex for doing what you do. It's great. Um, and, all the, and all the mods. The mods are outstanding you know i talk a lot to chance and a lot and sometimes to jammer and but everybody's you know it's great just to come on and have a chat i'm in dex's um telegram area and we're always chatting in there about all sorts of random stuff so um but yeah it's just say hi to everybody that's all really i was trying to get on before christmas to wish everybody a christmas wish but that was a bit tricky <laughs> Yeah, well, especially at the last two years, it's been a roller coaster, just back up and down, up and down. Well, uh, stoplight, yeah. I, yeah. I I appreciate you calling in, and I would love it. If, I don't know what part of Australia, but again, <laughs> offline. How did? By the way, how did you find me? Did you find me through D Live or through YouTube? I can I re. It's a funny thing. I've been probably. I found you just before our. Just before the whole stupidity kicked off 
<laughs> so, uh, and I did mention it at work, um, but I've ceased mentioning anything at work because you uh, you get yourself hard with the old uh, tinfoil hat routine and it just becomes tiresome. So I, every now and again, I'll put out just a little small bit of information to see what sort of bite I get. But yeah, no, it probably goes back, what oh, what is it now, two and a bit years. And I think I might have actually found you or somebody from when I was watching um, Dutch at some stage, I reckon I came across over there and it was on D-Life. Well, hey, it's nice to see you. And again, I I just always wonder, you know, how do folks from Australia find us? How do folks from Europe or Brazil, you know, we, we see people from Argentina, um, you, you know. Yeah. So thank you for uh, thank you for tuning in. I know that Australia has a very, very uh, vocal group of people that are totally against uh, mm. a lot, a lot of, you know, the craziness that's going on. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, like I've said to the guys before, I said I've had the the special the special treat that everybody they want to get because if I don't, I lose my job. So, um, and I'm probably called a an angry VX, but not a anti VX. So, so sorry to speak. Well, stoplight. It was a pleasure to have you call in again. Don't be a stranger, okay? I'd love to know. What's going on on Australia? Uh, there are severe filters between news outlets. That's why, you know, Australia, mm. their MSM is different from our MSM, even though they have very, you know, big similarities. Sometimes they will say things that we won't because, of course, the U.S. will have something that, you know, it, it's going to affect their pocketbook, whereas Australia will say stuff about us that doesn't hurt their pocketbook but hurts ours. Uh, and vice versa. You know, I've I've seen news about Australia that Australia would never cover. So it, it's really good if we get people yeah. in every country and make sure to share it out with more Australians so they, they so they know that we're here. Yep, no worries. That's all right. But yeah, thanks for everything you do, you guys, and everybody stay warm and or safe or both or and just hope that we don't get involved crazily is all we can hope, I think. All right. Well, Stoplight, you have a great night. Be safe, be prepared, and Mark. All right. All right. And then uh, we have, so a couple things popped up. Now, I, I was going through and I found several things that these were buried again. I mean, these are not top of the top of the pile. And that's the stuff that we look for. Uh, we dig so you don't have to. Very strange things popped up. Uh, of course, authorities raid Michigan home of a high-ranking Homeland Security official, Vance Callender. It says that authorities raided the Michigan home of the top U.S. Homeland Security investigations official, seized several items, item, items, <laughs> that, Mick items uh, from the residence, and a neighbor said on Tuesday, it said the raid occurred last Friday at the Royal Oak, uh, Michigan House of Vance Calendar, HSI space, special agent in charge at the agency's Detroit office, who worked in federal law enforcement for 26 years. It says Calendar, who was appointed uh, the top HSI agent in Michigan and Ohio in January 2020. It says that HSI's division of the U.S. Immigrations and Customs Enforcement, an agency of the Department of Homeland Security. It said that the agents supervised by calendar enforce immigrations and customs laws and investigate criminal organizations for drug smuggling, uh, financial crimes, trafficking, and other activities. It says it was not immediately known which law enforcement agency conducted the raid on calendar's residence or the reason for it. The raid was first reported by the Detroit News. So something fishy is going on. This was completely put at the bottom of the pile. Nobody was talking about this. In fact, it was completely buried. What what did they find at his house? Is he working with the cartels? Did he do something really bad? Did he, you know, they seized items. Did he have computers? Was he getting paid off by somebody? This is something that it's like, this isn't a surprise at all that it's not put on the front page. Obviously, DHS is having issues with its employees and Possibly some corruption, and that's just my theory. That's my opinion. Uh, that is not clarified because we don't yet know uh, what they grabbed from his house, why they raided his house. 
But at the same time, they raided his house. And again, m remember, a lot of the T people and uh, the T or ists that are supposedly coming in from the I countries, uh, the Middle East, they say that they are training for a huge, massive cyber event. Now, I thought it was kind of, kind of convenient that at the same time this happens, uh, they warn us of potential cyber safety issues. Now, Department of Homeland Security, we just talked about one of their high-ranking officials, uh, and then it says that DHS launches Cyber Safety Review Board to analyze major vulnerability events, or MVEs. It says the U.S. Department of Homeland Security established the Cyber Safety Review Board, or the CSRB, on Thursday, tasking the 15-member group with an investigation into the response and handling of the Log4j vulnerability late last year. The CSRB, whose creation was mandated by the B Administration's Executive Order uh, 14028 issued last May, is tasked with reviewing and assessing significant cybersecurity events so that government, industry, and the broader security community can better protect our nation's network and infrastructure. That's at least what the DHS stated. Initially, the panel will investigate the industry, community, and government response to the vulnerabilities found in the AUG, uh, Log4j software library in December 2021. So that happened. And then, of course, we have the White House cybersecurity official in Europe warning of Russian hacks. Now, remember, they're also telling us that uh, Russia is potentially going to do a FF, a Fantastic Freddy, on Ukraine. And again, we are the UK and we are coming out with this in the US. And it's like... <sighs> What if the U.S. is setting up to make it look like Russia did it to them? It would be a double, double FF. Or it would be a, a FFF. I don't know. But I do see uh, that it looks like they are heavily warning us not only about our power grid, uh, but uh, of course Russian hacks. We have covered almost every kind of uh, uh, hack of our infrastructure that we have seen, or at least publicly. We've even covered the numbers that they have not published to the public, uh, but they did publish to the DOE or the Department of uh, uh, the Department of Energy. So something big is happening here. What do you guys think? So I'm going to go over to the chat for a second because I want to hear what you have to say about this. Uh, Deathwish, thank you so much for your support, Stacy Franklin. I appreciate that. And then Machina Opus says, "Stoplight from Australia. Uh, what is going on, Machina? Another Australian." And then Simply Pony, thank you for your support. Always a pleasure to have you in. Uh, Teresa Chevalier, uh, thank you. Uh, if I probably said that wrong, I apologize. And then Two Old People on a Couch says, I would love to become a mod. Teresa Chevalier, thank you so much. I appreciate your support. Thank you guys for going above and beyond. Uh, it is appreciated. And then uh, uh, just show you a part of this. It says... Lunda Russia could use cyber attacks as part of its efforts to destabilize and further invade Ukraine. A White House cyber official uh, visiting her European counterpart said on Wednesday. It says that Ann Neuberger, U.S. Deputy National Security Advisor for Cyber and Emerging Technology, was meeting European Union and NATO officials in Brussels to discuss the threat of cyber attacks against Ukraine by Russia. It says, we have been warning for weeks and months, both publicly and privately, for potential attacks, Neuberger told a virtual panel. It says that the Russians have used cyber as a key component of their force projection over the last decade, including previously in Ukraine. Russia has massed over 100,000 troops, now they say closer to 200,000, uh, border with Ukraine, spurring fears of conflict. Although Russia denies its planning an invasion... It is demanding sweeping security uh, guarantees, including a promise NATO will never admit Ukraine. Newberger's visit comes after a massive cyber attack warning uh, Ukrainians to, quote, be afraid and expect the worst. It, of course, hit government websites in mid-January, leaving some pages inaccessible and prompting Kiev to open an investigation. We covered that 
uh, just a few weeks ago. And that was a big one because it hacked all of the government, Ukrainian government machines. And it basically popped up with a scary message like out of a movie saying, be afraid and expect the worst. I mean, how freaky scary do you want to get? You're talking about computers that had firewalls. This isn't, you know, these were pretty well protected computers and uh, they just cut them, cut into them like cheese. This is Russia's team or the U.S. or CIA. I don't know who's actually doing this. Again, they're putting an investigation into it. We may find out later that it was, you know, Bob, Bob Johnson over at uh, CIA. Who knows? It says, Kiev believes a hacker group linked to intelligence in Belarus, a close ally of Russia, carried out the cyber attack using malware similar to that being used by a group tied to Russian intelligence. Shell said on Tuesday it was rerouting oil supplies to other depots following a cyber attack on two subsidiaries of German logistics firm McCard and Balls this week. It says that... Uh, the nature of the attack and the identity of the attackers who carried out the McCord and Balls hack was not clear. The company did not respond to requests for comment. So think about this. They are, are not they're warning about Europe having these hacks, and they're also warning about China having hacks. They're also warning the US that our actual broadcast may be uh, somehow interrupted. So this is why I like popping over to you guys. What what do you guys think about this? What do you think is, is happening here? They're heavily warning. We've got FBI warning. We've got DHS warning. We've got the White House warning. We've got DOD warning. Uh, just a few days ago, we were warned by DHS about our power grid. And people are still sleeping? Jen Boyle says, all a cover-up. Rusty Nail says, man, I wish there was some good news, but I guess those days are gone. Where would be the, I, I honestly, uh, it's pretty hard to find. There are miracles and things like that. My wife has actually been thinking about it for months and months and months about starting a channel of, of the positive stuff. Because it's certainly out there. I guess the stuff that I have been focusing on and I'll never give up on is the stuff that uh, we'll give people a, I guess, a strategic advan uh, advantage if something happens. Most of the people that are watching usually have families or kids like I do. So I would hope that, you know, they won't be caught off guard. I do feel like this is, I, I feel like we are doing important work. I, I really do feel like that. And I, I do uh, thank everybody that sees you know what we actually do behind the scenes and and uh in front of the in front of the scenes so zippy moons thank you for supporting i appreciate that it's uh again d live uh the d live d love crew is is amazing kind of sad uh sad that the chest left that was a really uh sweet way to reward the audience and I think it shows less and less people uh, popping over there. Hopefully we get it back at some point. Well, Dex, uh, again, if you want to chime in on this before we get our next caller, it looks like we have. Uh, oh, it looks like our caller dropped. So we had Darla and I guess she dropped. So we are going to try to get another caller on. The number is Adam. Two, I got two, another one in just a second. Okay, two two four four zero zero Marf. I'm going to cover one more story and then we'll get back to it. Uh, we have European oil facilities hit by cyber attacks. It's like, you know, again, this is a bigger story that nobody really talked about. It was mentioned once on several of the broadcasts I saw, and I was I was watching pretty much for two days straight on different platforms and nobody was talking about this and remember there, an oil tanker just blew up out of nowhere and now it says multiple oil transport and storage companies across europe are dealing with cyber attacks so think about this 
uh, I wonder if any of this is going to affect our gas prices at all. I don't know. Um, obviously, we've got one huge uh, oil tanker full of oil that busted. I don't know if that even affects it or if that's just you know nothing compared to the, the world amount. But then this, it said IT systems have been disrupted at oil tanking in Germany. It said C invest in Belgium and Evos uh, and Evos in the Netherlands. In in total dozens of terminals with oil storage and transport around the world have been affected with firms reporting that the attacks occurred over the weekend. But experts caution against assuming that this is a coordinated attack. Uh, it says that the BBC understands that there are all three companies IT systems went down or were severely disrupted. Belgian prosecutors say that they were investigating the cyber attack that's affected. Sea Invest terminals, including the company's largest Antwerp called Sea Tank. It says a spokesman for the company said that they were hit on Sunday with uh, every port they run in Europe and Africa affected. I, this is why people need to pay attention. There are major infrastructures getting hit. This is not, this is obviously something is going on. Do you guys agree? I'm going to, I'm going to do a uh, survey and, and turn on the chat here. Do you think that cyber issue cyber attacks will be an issue in the next three months yes or no not gonna make uh give go too crazy on the options because i think it's pretty simple now uh let's see here turn this on so everybody can see sorry you guys i have a all of a sudden super pain and then dex when we can get that caller on Okay, we're ready if you're ready for the caller. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Adam Wildflower is uh, live, and there's uh, screenshots to a video we can't play in, in the links. So. Oh, okay. I'll, I, I thank you for giving me the warning. Okay, so, uh, but the the Dropbox link we can play. Yeah, they're just screenshots. Save time. And Wildflower is live on air. Wildflower, you are live on News. Doc. Almost said dot com. Hey, Adam. Hope you're doing all right there. You look like you're struggling a little bit tonight. Been there, done that. So I wish you well. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, just so wanted to. Share, there is something really weird going on. I don't think it's any secret that we've had some really bizarre weather all over the globe this year, but something was caught on weather radar by another YouTube channel, and he shared it, and there is just a bizarre spiral that showed up on the weather radar up by Montpelier, Vermont. And the weather radar also showed a similar spiral in New York. But I have never, ever seen anything like this. And nobody I've talked to has ever seen it. It's not, you know, it's, it's obviously not just a problem with buffering or anything like that. That's the most bizarre weather radar I've ever seen. That is not natural. You can't tell me that there's not something forcing that. My question is that there are reports coming in all over the globe, backed up by vid vid videos of people seeing strange lights in the sky. And when I say strange, what really bizarre is in all of the videos I've seen the lights are squares and there's multiple of these squares and they're all over the place but um, I also I'm, I'm kind of a physics buff and I follow solar and space activity gamma rays solar 
flares, that type of thing. And it was recently reported that a solar flare had hit in the Indian Ocean. And right exactly where that flare hit, it created this major storm that is now just devastating parts of Madagascar. So is this something solar? Is this a, to me does not look like you know it, it's a relatively small area when you're thinking global. But you know here the the picture around Rochester it's a little hard to make out, but it is there amongst the shades of blue. This is is not something natural. There's definitely some very large force causing this. What's uh, the one around Montpelier is really um, something. What is that spiral? Is that something is that or is that the normal part? That that's not normal. That is bizarre. And if you look at the one above Rochester, you can see those same types of bands. See here around Montpelier, you have the the blue and black spiral. You have those bands there. It's obviously some type of counterclockwise spin which generally is an indicator of pressure changes but not this pronounced and not this concentrated over this broad a space if it was something like you know a snow tornado or something like that there's no way it would be covering this broad of an area yeah, that's huge. That goes across multiple cities because Montpelier is there and Plattsburgh is there. I mean, it's it's between those. I don't know what the different the dis distance would be on that, but uh, that's. I I mean I would say at least dozens of miles. I mean that's that's pretty huge. Uh, very yeah, strange. Yeah, I've, I've been following the weather radar for decades. I've never seen anything like this ever. Yeah, that that is very strange. Um, does anybody else have something like this they would like to share as well? If if you've ever seen something like this, I know that we have a ton of. The the cool thing is, uh, is that we have so many great people in our audience that uh, they all have their kind of uh, niches that they go in. Even if they're not YouTubers, uh, our audience. There's certain people that we have in the audience that actually follow. Um, that you know follow I ISS. They watch almost every minute and they catch the coolest things. Or they follow the weather radar. Or there's uh, we have military that fo follow flight radar. So we've had we have just this huge, wide variety of of really awesome people in our audience, and it's just it's you guys are always looking out. You guys are always keeping your eyes open. So this was a really good catch, uh, wildflower. This is amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, you, you talk about EMP protection a whole lot. This definitely, to me, just really is encouragement that if people do not have their critical things backed up and protected by an EMP device, it's time to get serious about it because there's definitely something weird in the atmosphere going on whether it's natural man-made whatever protect yourself yeah it's especially uh you said that now you said that there where is the story about the the solar flare hitting the sea do you is there something that you can link to us or that we could try to find to show people that yeah, the the website that I follow, there's also a YouTube channel. It's suspiciousobservers.org. Oh, okay. No, no, I'm very familiar. Okay, well, uh, Dex, we linked sus Suspicious Observers already on our website, right? I'm assuming that you're going to add that uh, as well. I'll get, a I'll get a link up to him in a moment. Adam. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he did some great documentary work, too. Uh, he did a great... Uh, actual kind of I, I don't know if you would even call it a mini documentary it would uh be a, a you know if it was a really long one and it was about the how the sun was in involved in all of these different events um well thank you so much for calling in wildfire is there one more thing you want to say before you go uh no just I, i'm praying for you wish you all the best of of you know had 
similar problems to what you've had and, and had to have part of my intestines removed and such like, and it's not fun. So prayers to you and your family. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I, I, I couldn't believe how many people have actually had it. Once I said what I had, everybody was, I mean, it's crazy how many people have dealt with the same thing. Um, thank you so much. And I appreciate you and wildflower. I'm sorry. Excuse my, uh, my mistakes tonight. I'm just, really not on top of it so thank you have a good night all right thank you god bless you too god bless you too thank you yeah i i'm not uh i'm messing up my my reading and everything else um i apologize you guys i'm excuse me i'm just having problems tonight um Sorry, it's really distracting when you have, I, and I'm sure some of you probably know this, anybody who has like sharp pains or anything like that, it just completely, it makes your mind blank. You can't think of what you were doing. I really apologize. It's very unprofessional. Uh, Dex. Uh, do we, so we need we need I'll just uh, be honest with you guys we need one at, I think we'll, no we have okay we got one more caller uh, Jamie uh, is on deck so Jamie please get ready to get on uh, we do have of course uh, Dex can you cover the Russia small nukes for a second if you have the third car, caller lined up uh, I, I don't have them totally lined up but I can cover it real quick Okay, thank you. So um, what they're talking about here is specifically is that there's a lot of information about how many of what you would call these tactical or small, um, you know, some people call them battlefield type nukes. So these are these are really strategic and tactical in use. They're not necessarily um, something that would, you know, you would take out huge sections of cities or large large uh, portions of, of the country. So um, again, very small, but the interesting thing or what they're basically trying to make the comparison here is that Russia has invested heavily in it and they have plenty and we don't. So we're not necessarily ready for it. Um, so if you take a look and, you know, go, go read the article in detail if you want all of the details, but basically the, the gist of it is that, you know, if something does break out, there's an opportunity for um, for Russia to actually use tactical um, and small yield uh, nukes like this. And we really don't have, of course, it's hard to defend against it. Nobody can really defend against it easily outside of, you know, missile defense. But, you know, we don't really have the thing to answer back to them, at least. That's what they're saying is there's 10 to 1, I think, is the ratio that Russia has over, uh, over the U.S. or over even NATO uh, with these tactical type uh, um, nukes. So... Um, kind of an interesting spin. Now, I know there's a lot of talk about a no first nuke um, uh, agreement that we said we would uh, we would agree to between China, Russia and ourselves. But um, I don't know that that's actually been signed, although they're still trying to push for it to be signed. Of course, something like that might, you know, potentially help in a conflict like a European conflict with Ukraine, where, you know, we would hope that maybe we wouldn't or they wouldn't uh, use you know, um, devices like that. Instead, they would set them to the side and use more conventional um, tactics. So uh, the the jury's still out as to whether or not they're going to sign that or even if they would abide by it. Of course, but nobody's that really even abided include, by the agreements in the past. Would that even include these? Because if they are like super tactical and really small, like say it just took out a, you know, uh, a city block or something like that, would that even you know, will they put fine print in that agreement that nobody will do first strike if if they do something like this? Because they're supposed to respond in kind, or that's kind of how it works, right? Yeah, that is. But I don't think we have the ability to really respond in kind. It's not part of our, uh, at least that's what they're saying to, publicly, least... is it's not part of our arsenal. So, um, but yeah, this would fall into that category uh, around, uh, unless the this thing they sign turns out to be, you know, specifically only, you know, large scale, um, you know, nukes, right. As opposed to smaller tactical, I think they call those high yield, um, are the larger ones. Yeah. So that's, um, yeah, you know, well, I, I, what I'm surprised by is that 
we don't have that. I know that during Obama, I remember all of the stories of them talking about how they were modernizing while we were, you know, decapitating our, our entire, uh, you know, nuke backups. Like, we were just tearing it apart. Uh, he basically tore down a lot of our, our missiles, a lot of our, but a lot of our strategical equipment he scrapped. Uh, I remember one thing after another. So that was, that was even before, you know, T-Man, that was during Obama's uh, era. And then this, so we talked about the S-400 anti-aircraft missiles being uh, placed in Moscow or out right outside in Dimitrov. Now they're being placed in Belarus. These are anti-aircraft missiles. These can knock uh, an aircraft out of the air. Uh, I want to say that at about 250 mile range. Uh, so again, for these to be moved into Belarus is kind of a big marker. It says uh, that Russian S-400 Triumph surface-to-air missile systems have deployed to Belarus and will go on air defense combat alert as part of an inspection of the Union's state response force. Russia's, Russia's defense ministry reported on Thursday. S-400 Triumph anti-aircraft missile systems of the Eastern Military District's Air Force and Air Defense Army involved in inspection of the Union State's response force uh, have arrived in Belarus. It says, quote, on, upon arrival of the, at the places of accom accomplishing their training tasks, the Russian teams of the S-400 surface-to-air missile launchers will go on air defense combat alert as part of the Russia-Belarus integrated air defense system. Basically saying that everything is, they're, they're setting up their complete defenses, which if you see all the stuff they've deployed and all of the the actual mobile buildings they're ready and now they're ready defense wise too if they get invaded i i mean they're they're actually preparing as if they are like they're preparing to get invaded that's what's that's what's kind of fishy you know what if we're not being told the truth about anything what if you know, what if they know secretly about a plan that we're going to invade them or something like the U.S. is just going to crush Russia like an ant? I, I I, just I wouldn't be surprised by anything at this point that I'm not saying I believe that I don't even think that. But, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised by anything at this point. Um, and then wages world. Oh, don't worry about it, man. I, it's over now. It, it passed. When it passes, it's good. I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. Uh, Lisa Terry. I'm sorry it happened on air. I apologize. Lisa Terry, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for your support. VR. Ethan says hello from Aska. Hey, Ethan. I hope you're doing well, kiddo. And then uh, CS, thank you so much uh, for your support. And Ariel, Marfugal News, the only news I use, even still after Mike Penna from Penna Perspective broke my heart. <laughs> I hope you guys get back together. Now, Mike, you get get your Pena Perspective right and uh, get back with Ariel. Simply Pony, thank you, Machine Opus and Deathwish. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for supporting Independent. Uh, all right, we're going to get the, the next caller lined up. First, though, I do want to remind you, go check out EMP Shield. If you don't know what this is, again, the caller mentioned uh, it's protection against an EMP. It's actually a, a protection device that, again, you can get one for your car, your house, your generator, your RV, d whatever, you, whatever device you end up choosing will defend that device against all three phases of an EMP, including, uh, again, uh, E1, E2, and E3 can also protect you against the natural kind which again if you watch people like Sub suspicious observers you'll know uh, there are a lot of folks that believe that the solar flare will be uh, the root of a catastrophe and again solar flares do happen they're guaranteed in fact the Carrington level event happens on average about 150 years it's been 160 so we're overdue by some uh, standards again go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP uh, the car version is probably one of the most popular. Then you won't be stuck somewhere out in the middle of the 
in in the middle of nowhere or at work when you're trying to get home. Uh, that one takes about 10 minutes to get into. Uh, again, if you get that one, you end up getting $50 off and you end up helping the show at the same time. Again, you can get $50 off per device on any device you get from EMP Shield. So again, uh, marfuglenews.com slash EMP. And uh, let's see here. Let's get our next caller on. It looks like we have Jamie. Jamie is a first, another first-time caller uh, talking about South Florida. Let's see here. Hey, Marf, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? And it's, Hello? Uh, it says you're from Florida. Is that right? I am from South Florida. Yes, I am. So I got some local news, some ground news, some kind of conspiracy stuff going on. Like, um, I would just like to throw it out there to everybody. Maybe somebody can come up with an answer for us. All right, let's hear it. Okay. I've been working in a gas I don't work in the gas station. I actually work in a little cafe on the side of a gas station. Right? Yeah. Um, about three weeks ago, they said, if you'll pay us rent, we'll let you take over this whole thing for us. And because I said yes, a week after they gave me the option, um, their prices have gone up 40 cents per gallon per gas. Everything in the store has also gone up. And then all the other two gas stations, which are literally a block and a block and a block away. The other two gas stations are still 40 cents less than the gas station that I said yes to. But when you walk into these other stores, everything inside the stores costs about 40% more than they did two weeks ago. Um, so I found out also that all of these gas stations, just not in my only local area, which I have three in my local area, plus many more along the US-1 route are owned by the Middle East people. And um, they're trying to sell everything off to us at very high prices. Can anybody explain this to me? Now, Dex, uh, if you... there's some things I'm not allowed to say. So no, 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 you're them. fine. No, I'm but asking. All of these, I have found out in the past two weeks that all of the gas stations in my area are literally owned by the same three families, and they're all from the middle eight awesome country over there. All of them. All of them in my area, in I have where I live. I there is one, two, three, four, six, like eight. Well, I was gonna call on Dex. Yeah. Gonna... And if you can, I don't know if you're on speakerphone or if you are watching on TV, but it it will repeat to me. Um, Dex, can you? I guess I'm a little confused on this. So if I know that you'll be able to say it correctly and the right way for the te for the show too. Right. So there's there's a lot of so what I understood and, and help me uh, out here Jamie. I think what you were telling me is that a, a lot of these a lot a lot of these gas stations are all trying to basically get out of the business. They want to collect their money and go. Yeah, they're all trying to sell. They're all trying to sell to just, the local Yeah, and it's not just the um one country, it's multiple countries uh, of ownership. Yeah, multiple have, uh, nationalities. I right, but say, I can't. Different nations, right, nationalities of the same, same region. Yes, it's multiple nationalities of the same region over in the middle, uh, <clears throat> the E, you yeah, know, know the part. middle E yeah, over there. Part. Okay, so multiple nationalities. Uh, we have a couple of different big names from, I can say the names of the gas stations, right? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Sicko, Valero, Orion, Circle K, uh, and 7-Eleven. All in my area are either closing down or selling off. Now, who All are of they, them. Who the 7-Eleven the already closed down. Okay, let's not talk over each other. Who are, we, who are they selling them to? I'm sorry, say that again? Who are they selling them to? Are they just trying to sell them to an the American? The local people. 
Anybody that will buy, basically anybody that will buy them. Because I've been working at my place, which is a Sitco. I've been working my butt off over here. They're literally trying to sell it to me rent to own for the next 15 years. Like rent to own, like I'm going to give it all to you. Just pay us this amount to pay our rent and you, whatever profit you make, you make. Like literally trying to run out of the whole place. Like are, what? So How, are what? you saying? How did this happen? What? Are you, I've been working there Jamie, for like that, six Jamie, months on the weekend. Jamie, is is it like a fire? What would be called a fire sale? In other words, they're trying to sell at a low price and just dump their properties. Get out of there! Yes, and try to get out of here, and trying to get out of here. Plus, they also raise their prices on there. But like the weird thing is, because like I'm on the I'm on the food side, and on the gas side, they just literally raise their prices forty cents per gallon. The people literally one block down the road are three seventy nine. And the and my the people at the Sicko are at four nineteen now, and they're telling us to go to Wawa if they want better prices. But at the Wawa, which is further north, it's like I don't know, like half a mile further north. So do you let me like okay? Let me ask you a question, if if you can. Let uh, let me speak for a second. So do you do you think that? They know something is about to happen. Is that what your theory yeah. is? That that is exactly the feeling I'm getting. Whichever gas station I go, because I go to all of them. I go in and I buy different things from different people because I, you know I work at one, right? And I'm supposed to take over one of them. So of course I'm going to go into the other one. And oh, as soon as we get new gas, we're going to raise our prices too. And then I go into another one. Oh, we're going to try to keep our prices down, but. You know, once we sell out of everything, you know, they can just build this, can take this place down. But so they're, I think they're going to take down the Valero on the corner. They're building up a new gas station way up on Atlantic, which is like six blocks of west from where the one I think they're about to take down. Like, I think they're just trying to sell everything down here. Well, what I think is weird, have maybe, that, maybe that's local. But um, what I think is weird is that they're even offering an employee a rent to own thing where you can actually sit there and do it. I, I would take them up on it, but who knows? Uh, again, I don't know how hard it is to run a gas station. Valentine's Day, I take over the the restaurant portion of the gas station, but the gas station's got su such a high price now, which only happened two days ago. They raised their prices two days ago after I finally said yes to them. When I said yes, I will take over the restaurant portion. Their gas prices went up 40 cents and nobody's coming there now. Like I've seen this, I've like we drove by half the day today because we were doing everything else we had to do. So, and so weird. Because <laughs> the gas station's been dead and the other two gas stations, which are literally a block and then one more block away, like literally a block and a block away they have been they've had lines packing their cars full of gas so i think the other two gas stations are about to raise their prices and i think they're trying to get out of here well All of them. Uh, again i think it's weird and and by the way it uh yeah the petrodollar is dead that's part of usa financial nightmare so oh that is another thing is is of oil about to just completely drop out do they know something as far as that goes? Like, it's not about that something's going to happen here. It's that the the petrodollar is about to drop, and maybe somebody got a heads up. Like, maybe you know, maybe they had family back there that said, "Hey, you need to get home," or and they don't want to run it. Okay, just remember, Biden stopped our pipeline from Canada to America, right? It was it was just full oil, so we still had to refine it and everything. But what Trump did was stop the pop, the pipeline that was going to go through Russia and allow them to basically sell pure oil to England and everything. The moment Joe Biden got back in, he killed all of the fracking for America, all of our offshore oil drilling, and then allowed Russia to run their pipeline. So, wait, can somebody explain that one to me? Can Anybody explain that one to me? America went from finally being 
oil independent. The first time in over 150 years to being back on surviving off of OPEC, off of the, the Middle East countries for oil, and they're now allowing Russian pipelines to go through, but Canada to America pipelines are not allowed. Yeah, no, I, I totally get you. Uh, Jamie, we're out of time, but uh, of it's time. your first time called. Okay. Don't make it yeah. your last. Love you, man. All right, love you too. Fugo fam, you guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Jax and Marf, love you guys. All right, love you too. Thank you so much. I it, it wasn't her it wasn't her fault it was the it was the phone's fault but the um I was I was a little bit confused on what I guess her, the 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 theory was right I do think that's kind of odd and it, somebody said a Dominic Dolt in the audience says I'm a sales rep uh, my Middle East owners are not going anywhere so there's you know one person saying hey these guys all seem like they're going. There's somebody else in the audience that says that they're a sales rep. Maybe they deal with their. The thing is, though, maybe uh, maybe they have a different setup. Maybe those people you're dealing with are the managers, not the owners. I just wonder. <coughs> I and and what Middle East country are they from? I wonder, like, you know, what do some of those companies kind of give a heads up? Like, what if the petrodollar was about to fail? And maybe that person just happens to be, uh, you know, somebody who has family back there that actually knows something. I don't know. Uh, Jeff P is in the audience. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, he focuses on sun, uh, all sorts of sun related things and all sorts of cool videos over on his channel. Go check him out. Uh, Jeff P said, uh, what state is she in? Florida, the honeypot state. I don't know. As far as. It just seems like, you know, something is weird there. But I always keep an open mind. I'm not close-minded to her theory because what if they did know? You know, what if what if uh, somebody who owned 15 gas stations, uh, you know, got a call from somewhere in Saudi Arabia and they said, hey, get out of there. You need to sell those as quick as you can. Fire sale. Who knows? Um, Dex. Uh, the, as far as the U S is this, what, what are the updates that we have as far as it, it seems like we've already said that they're alleging that they're doing this. Is there anything new that we can find that says that they are solidly going to do this? Uh, and then there's um, a video, right? But yeah. Other than Kirby's uh, thing, which we covered over on news. So guys, if you haven't been to Marfugal news or other channel, uh, definitely go check out some of those shorter vids, but, and share them, please. Um, yeah, there's not really a lot of new information coming out here, but I think this is definitely one of those areas that we have to pay very close attention to, especially as it's fed to us when it does happen, if it does happen, I should say, um, you know, from the media, because this kind of stuff is, is usually orchestrated really well. It's going to be, you know, all of a sudden a whole media blitz of information would come out and it would say, you know, look at you know, these people, what they did, they were wearing a certain color, you know, uniform or a certain type of helmet, or, you know, we think they were throwing in, you know, chlorine in bottles or whatever, right? Like there's, you know, we've seen all of these different allegations in the past from the media and they really blitz it when it happens. So um, this type of thing is exactly what we've seen in the past. And if the, the, the things that we have to look at is, you know, take it with sort of a grain of salt. I mean, what is it? Operation North um, when you walk through the woods, uh, that operation was specifically about around the time of the um, uh, Cuban crisis, right? The missile crisis there. And it was basically prescribing from the U.S. side to do the exact same thing to engage uh, a conflict and, and stage the ability to have a conflict, right? So, you know, so just be careful when this stuff comes out or, or does come out or, or they talk about it. Like, it's almost impossible to know which side is which, right? It's it's really hard because it's not as transparent as you may think it is. Well, okay. No, it, here's here's the thing. When, when we, the U.S., are, like, repetitively drilling it into everybody's head, hey, we know we have absolute information that Russia is planning to make it look like Ukraine is going to attack them. Then it puts in his, oh, well, they're planning on making it look. So when, 
Ukraine actually does it or U.S. troops with with NATO allied troops go in there and actually try to physically start it or they invade Russia. Remember, Russia's setting up defenses like they're trying to stop people from invading them. What if Ukraine goes stomping in there or attacks them? And it really is us, but they already set it up to be like, no, 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 that's a Russian this, this. And by the way, uh, when when I show you uh, this right here, this is, that's the word that we f have replaced with Fantastic Freddy, okay? Or FF, but even FF now, we've seen people, you know, some get dinged for. Uh, but yeah, Fantastic Freddy is this. So remember to tell people that without saying, you know, if somebody's saying, well, what is an FF? You know, make sure to tell them that. So thank you, everybody, for helping on that. So the cyber events that they're they're basically telling us all over in different places of the world that there are uh, huge high risks to cyber events, to infrastructure, Two, we've had cyber events on oil, on actual things that affect the global market, on power. They just told us we're gonna we uh, have specific and credible threats against power, uh, and then uh, power grids, and then also we knocked out the leader of ISIS. There's just distraction, 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 binging bells over here like Beetlejuice's bar, and and, and then it's like over here quietly. They're telling you all of this other stuff. Oh, there's cyber attacks. There's cyber attacks. Oh, you, uh, your broadcast may be interrupted when you're watching the Beijing Olympics. Puts it in the back of our head. So when the power does go out, you're not worried about it. They're warning us time after time again. And now they've, they've told the, every American to have six months to a year of food. And people don't. That's why I said... They have warned us, but will we listen? People will say, oh, it's fear-mongering. No, fear-mongering is, is just straight up making something like uh, on Thursday, they're coming to get your uh, weapons and they're going to take you and, and, you know, they're going to put you in handcuffs and put you in a cage uh, by Friday. That's That, I think, is, is, you know, BS. Or making up things on purpose to try to scare people. As far as this goes, we have documentation. We have the the documentation that shows FBI is doing this, that the White House, that DOD, that DHS. In just one show, we've covered at least four different events where they're, they're warning of cyber activity on top of the official warnings that we have gotten from our own government, from other governments, from our enemies even. Our enemies are saying that U.S. is expecting a cyber event. And then, of course, this, it's like, what is Ukraine going to do to Russia? And is that going to start off the conflict? Does does the U.S. really want a conflict with Russia? Do we want to crush them? Do we want millions of people to, uh, to perish? Do we need a conflict to reset this $30 trillion debt we put ourselves into? Uh, we just wrote all these trillions of dollars into bills that, you know, you probably saw your $1,200 check and just kind of took it in the bind. Or $3,600 or whatever it was over time. I, I wasn't able to get that. My wife got one of those checks. So, you know, I don't know what is happening here, but it's like obvious it's pretty obvious that people need to start paying attention all right and then uh let's see here i want to thank lsr86 thank you for supporting and remember go over to marfuglenews.com slash prep if you want to go over and check out my patriot supply you can get food long term short term make sure go over to check that out i'll uh, put the picture of that on there um Catherine Wilson, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Dog Whisperer, thank you for the massive support. Thank you for supporting Independent. Uh, but I do hope you support for the Independent News, not for me directly. Uh, thank you for all you guys do. We love you. Take care of yourself. Prayers. Thank you, Christian Harrison. Uh, Wages World, uh, thank you again. Uh, dude, 
you are awesome. We got to have you on. I'd love to have you and Mark on. Mark sent me a nice message the other day. Um, and I don't know if I got back to him. I, I honestly don't know if I responded. Uh, but Mark, Mark, uh, Mark Pyers, uh, he sent me a really nice uh, message, so I appreciated that. If you guys haven't checked out Mark, Mike, Mark, Mark, Dex, do you want to cover the? Um... And Adam, if you want to grab the link that's in uh, screener, I put in there. I just want to go over some quick uh, late breaking news. I think a couple of people said it in chat. I didn't see your names, but it just I just saw it about three hours ago, uh, is when it's being reported, at least from Reuters. Um, but uh, the U.S. As apparently or our, our administration and part of their negotiations with the country that uh, begins with the letter I and sounds like ran to the store um, by lifting the um, sanctions and getting prepared, I guess, for the next phase of having the talk, trying to get back to the original 2015 deal that they had. Um, so that's kind of uh, interesting news. You know, when you release news like this on Friday or late on a Friday, it's because you don't want it seen. Okay. Uh, in the PR world and the media and press world, your breaking news is on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And then by Thursday news falls out. And by Friday, if you have bad news, you need to put it out on a Friday because nobody pays attention over the weekend and come Monday, it gets pushed to the bottom. So, um, I'm not saying that this is good or bad news. It is what it is, but um, just saw that this had broke about three hours ago, at least on Reuters. Um, so it's kind of uh, will be interesting to see what they do as far as, you know, the fact that they're changing the sanctions and, and sort of relaxing them as part of the negotiation talks they're having, which is exactly what they had back in 2015. So what, what is it? What should people be concerned about with this? Well, they've been on, you know, the country has been under pressure uh, to not do certain things. Um, and they've been sanctioned because they were trying to do them. So now they're basically saying, don't worry, we'll leave all those sanctions off and we'll get to the the nuclear discussion. You know, we'll, we'll do this as part of the next steps where we get to the nuclear discussion, right? Which is you shouldn't have those. Um, but if you remember back, you got to rewind many years, you know, a whole administration before you know, we had all these people that were going in and supposedly inspecting, but weren't always getting access to see what they were really doing. And oh, by the way, we were funneling, you know, billions of dollars and a lot of it in cash and airplanes flying it over there, right? Um, so it, it's a it's a totally different flip um, on what we had done for the last uh, five years uh, versus what we were doing, you know, before five years ago and the two administrations ago. So. It's like we're heading back to that. It's what it looks like. So it sounds like there's some corruption that's happening, and they put it out on a Friday so nobody would notice. Uh, or yeah. or maybe somebody at the very top of our White House has uh, got somebody in their pocket. Yeah, and so just think about like how much money they weren't making, right? Because they've been sanctioned in the sense that they couldn't distribute, they couldn't sell, they couldn't, you know, they had all sorts of restrictions. They were very limited to who they could distribute to. So if all that gets lifted, now they start funneling in more money, uh, for their government, for their country, for what they're doing. And then also think about this, the um, the is country probably isn't happy about that, right? So there's going to be something along those lines about what they have to say with this, if they agree or disagree um, with what's happening, because they're they're the ones that are, you know, got their eyes peeled really and, and, and bullseye set up for uh, the ran to the country store, the, I ran to the store country. It just feels like we're in one big setup from beginning to end, we're just getting uh, pummeled by these setups and, and poof, serve it up. Marissa One, thank you for gifting out a badge over on DLive. Thanks for everybody that goes over to DLive and supports. Again, thank you. You guys are amazing. Really, really. Angela1609, life is better on stilts. Uh, Quil Quilty Girl, thank you so much. Major Lee, thank you. Uh, Zippy Moons, thank you again, especially for uh you, your attendance and and thank you guys for showing up every night i can't say a thank you enough uh dex thank you for your service tonight i appreciate you thank you for being patient absolutely adam and do you want me to give a quick rundown on web only yes i absolutely okay so guys head over to morefuglenews.com click on the thumbnail for the show and scroll down to web only content there's a lot going on a lot that we couldn't cover um if you hadn't heard uh, there's new updates on that GoFundMe account, which, by the way, is now gone. Uh, not just it's being frozen. It's they've came out and said, 
it's no longer there. You can't have it and people can get their money back um, if they request it. But if they don't in a certain amount of time, we're going to give it to whatever charity they want to give it to, which just sounds absurd to me. Uh, all the details are there, including that's authorities so... that were praising them. Oh my God. That's so yeah. messed up. It was so big in the last Why? few hours. They were crashing the alternative systems that are out there. Like the um, uh, give, uh, I can't remember the other one. It's give something. Uh, it, it's down because they can't, they can't handle the traffic. So keep that in mind. Um, a couple other videos, a video um, coming out of, uh, of the Olympics, uh, specifically of reporters being shuffled off by uh, the certain parties that are not allowing them to be filmed at that location. Um, some interesting stuff going on in school. So it's a lot of hot videos there. So go take a look. And then also lots of news, everything else we couldn't cover um, from the political spectrum, from very uh, opinionated articles that are not our opinions, but are opinions that we found out that may be interesting to you. So go take Look, marfugalnews.com, click on the thumbnail, scroll down to web only. And if you're on YouTube, it's so simple. Just open the description. It's the first link there. It says show notes. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for being patient with us tonight. Uh, VR, thank you. I appreciate you. Ethan, CS, I appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful night. And uh, we will see you guys later. Thank you. A big special thank you to Susan Donahue, Gone Girl, Triple Seven, Veteran Steve, uh, EOD Vet. Thank you, guys. Uh, all of our veterans here, thank you for your service. All of our police, all of our uh, firemen, our first responders that are uh, dealing with all the crappiness that's out there. I will say this. if you, I don't know if it, many of you are in urban areas, but it is getting insane. Uh, groups of four men are just like walking around. Uh, I'm not, I'm, this is an example. This is just one day this week, four men, uh, hiding behind and then knocking on a door and they all mob into the house. This is happening in suburbs and I'm not talking like just one, uh, people are just smashing into doors. People are just going into houses daytime with people there and holding them up by gunpoint, taking their stuff. Like, this isn't on, I mean, this isn't just some like scare stories on the news. Like anybody who can follow their neighborhood uh, on neighbors, you actually see the ring videos. None of them are being published on Twitter. None of these are going public. Hell, if, if, um, if I just took my neighborhood and put all those videos on, on, on ring or, or on Twitter, it would be the hottest Twitter in the world. I mean, a woman sitting there with a two foot machete just staring into the window like there's just it is absolutely getting insane uh earlier today i was at target and for the fifth time this month i have watched a guy load up an entire shopping cart with the big sets of 200 hundred dollar legos and that's specifically what they i've been trying uh to get my uh kid the same little friend's lego set for a month cannot get it and I see where it's going. These guys are loading up full carts and they're just walking out the emergency exit. And you can barely hear the door in the back. I literally see it. The, the employees see it. They don't do anything. What happened to our country that people can't tackle that mother and put him down on the ground? All these stupid, oh, get offended. Oh, oh I, well, I wasn't stealing. I was just borrowing them and taking them home. You don't want to don't want to classify them as a thief. I don't know what they're doing. If somebody steals from my store, I am I am tackling you. I'm putting you in an arm bar and I'm going to break your arm. I I just don't understand it. Uh why when, I who oh well they could sue. Okay. Well, I can't buy my kid a damn gift cuz this crackhead keeps stealing all 40 of the Lego sets. It's it's getting old. All right, you guys, have a good night. Be safe, be prepared, and Marv out. I can't, I'm not, I'm, we'll do a special long shoucher tomorrow.
Thank you, MVZ. Theta Mooned Me, thank you so much. Really appreciate your support. Tennessee Preparedness, East Tennessee, thank you. From Australia, Machina Opus, thank you so much for your massive support. And Teresa Chevalier, thank you so much for your support. Open House, Texas, thank you for your support. Errol the Wrestling Mermaid, I'm sorry that happened. I appreciate you. Mike, I hope you're still watching. I uh, hope you guys work out your stuff. Thank your mods. Put in mod in the chat right now. No. 